Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is the first day that we're live streaming in the new year 2022. Today is January 3rd. If you are watching the replay, I am so glad that you've come by. I've got a lot in store for you. If you are here for the live stream, welcome. Please log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address, so that we can chat along with you, whether you're watching the replay or you are here for the live stream. I have three beautiful window cards for you today using acetate. I'm going to tell you right now, strap in a little bit longer than normal because I'm going to demo all three for you. We're going to start with something kind of basic and then we're going to move it up and they're all going to be built upon each other. Wait until you see the final card. Not only do I have the one I demoed, but I have a couple variations for you as well. And the best part about it is all the exciting new products that come out tomorrow with Stampin' Up! in their brand new mini catalog and their sale brochure. Now, if you don't already have a demonstrator, you can request copies over at lisastampstudio.com. We would love to get those off to you. Now, a couple things before we get started. I just have two housekeeping items. The first is you're going to want the free project sheet. It's very extensive tonight. There are multiple photos of all the projects I'm going to demonstrate along with cutting dimensions. And you're going to get that free project sheet down below the video title when tonight's live stream is over. And then finally, I want to introduce you to Gina Curcio Holly. You'll recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She is also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio, and she's an avid stamper. She's been stamping almost her entire life. So she is more than versed to be able to answer your questions and help provide links during the live stream because quite honestly, there is no way to keep up with it and stamp at the same time. So Gina is here to help with you. But rest assured, I come back and I read every single comment. So your feedback is very, very important to me. I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and let's get started. We're going to start on the very first card. And like I said in the introduction, we are going to be building off of this. So we're going to start with something kind of simple. And I am actually going to start with a piece of acetate. And all my cards are going to be acetate based. This one is four and a quarter by eight and a half. Now, don't worry about all the cutting dimensions because those are going to all be in that free project sheet. I want to show you how I scored this because I get this question quite a lot. How do you score it? It's kind of thick. Now, the Stampin' Up! Acetate is actually called Window Sheets in my online store, and I love the quality. They're a little bit thicker than regular acetate sheets. Not flimsy, but not so hard to work with, so you're going to love that. All right, so I've got my trimmer here, and I love that it includes both a scoring and a cutting blade. So obviously the black one's going to be for cutting, and I can navigate them up and down out of the way, which means I can leave them here on the clear track at the same time. Now I also realize you've got a little glare from the other camera. Sorry about that, not much we can do. But I'm going to score this in half at four and a quarter. Now this scoring blade is going to do a decent job, but keep in mind it's intended for cardstock, and obviously this is acetate. So what I'm going to do is once I have it lined up against that straight edge, I love that because I can't do anything straight. I'm going to score up and down several times. This may not leave the type of score line that you are typically used to on regular cardstock, but it's going to give me an indentation. Now let me just set that off to the side and you're going to, you might be able to see it here in the center. I'm going to try to move my silicone craft sheet underneath there to see if you can see that a little better. Do you see it now? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that as a basis to kind of pinch this. I'm going to kind of hold that closer to my face so I can see where it's at. And then once I'm kind of confident that I've got it, I'm going to butt up my ends together and then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to go over that line that I've creased. That's actually going to help reinforce that crease line for the next thing I want to teach you. Now, this is obviously optional, this next step, but I love the way it turned out and I want to share it with you. So I'm going to bring in one of the brand new embossing folders that's coming out from that mini catalog. I want to make sure that you do not miss tomorrow. It is a big day in the Stampin' Up! world and for paper crafters. 92 pages packed of full stuff. And it's also Stampin' Up!'s largest sale of the year. They do this twice a year. It's called Celebration. For every $50 you spend in product, whether from this or our annual catalog, you can choose from here for absolutely free. There's products in the $50 category, and if you have a bigger wish list, even those in the $100 category. 
Now you're going to notice that this embossing folder is a little bit smaller than what you might be used to. And it's from the Stripes and Splatters Duo. So there's two folders in that packet, and this is one of them. And one of the other things I get asked a lot is, well, how do you use them on something like this? Well, obviously, if you went this way, it's going to be too small, right? And if we went this way, it's not going to be wide enough. So let me just walk you through what I did. So I put half the folder in at a time, and I was very, very careful to make sure that my pattern here reached all the way to the edge so that I had a continuous pattern. And I ran it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now, obviously there's gonna be a missed area here. So what I did is I opened this up and I scooted it over. I did my best to make that separation here in the center for this specific card. Now I know you're going to ask me, well, isn't that gonna slightly deboss what you've already done? And the answer is yes, slightly but I wanna show you one that's finished. And I simply didn't bring the machine in just to save space tonight because we're gonna be doing three projects. So let me set this one off to the side. And here's the one I did before you joined me. Do you see it? So it does look embossed, doesn't it? And I think honestly that you really can't even tell what's embossed and what's not embossed. And I love that added texture because we're gonna be making a window card. So it's gonna show from both sides. And of course, any embossing folder will work. And I used a smaller folder on purpose because I wanted to show you how you could cover the whole thing. Now, let's go into the best part of the card itself. Now, I've got some pieces here. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to work on a background. Now, this is a brand new background stamp that's going to be in the mini catalog. It's called Gentle Waves. Now, background stamps, as you can see, are very, very large. And oftentimes people are intimidated with them. Now, if you have a stamp positioner, the stamp apparatus, you're welcome to use that. If I'm making just one card, I just go ahead and use my clear block, but I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna give you some tips. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put this right on top of my clear block and I'm just gonna kind of press from the front to make sure it's good and stuck. Our cling stamps, they stick beautifully. You don't have to worry. Now I've got a pad of grid paper here and you can use whatever you've got at home, but I love this for this technique. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to start with Pacific Point ink and I am going to ink this up. Now I know that I want the stamp image, let me just take a quick look at that, kind of this way. So I want the lighter waves at the top and the more perpetuation here at the bottom. And again, this is a square card base for this acetate one and you can change that of course. So I know I'm not gonna need the whole thing because this is background stamp is designed for a full size card. All right, so we've got that inked up really good and I'm not gonna pick it up. Now, if you've been here and you've watched my YouTube channel before, you know that I struggle with basal joint osteoarthritis and it's very, very painful. So to pick things up is very difficult for me. So let's do this. Let's leave it face down. I'm gonna add my paper right here. I'm taking my grid paper, see what I'm doing? And I'm folding it over the top and I am rubbing. What's gonna happen now is it's going to transfer the design from the bottom up, which means you don't have to manhandle these big stamps. Especially if you're a brand new card maker and you don't have all the fun gadgets the rest of us do, that's okay. I don't want you to think you can't use these if you don't have one. And then I'm just gonna use that to help me lift that off. Look at that, didn't it come out beautiful? All right, now let me give you another tip. I'm gonna set that off to the side for just a minute. There's a lot of residual ink here. And oftentimes if we take this to our cleaning platform, which in my case is the stamp and scrub, or maybe in your case, it's the chamois, it's gonna dirty that thing up really quick. So what I like to do is I like to go back over it again and remove as much of that excess ink as I can, because I'm gonna be honest with you, once I'm stamping, I don't wanna get away from my table to have to clean that, right? So I just get as much of this off as I can. That allows me to keep my stamp and scrub, which is just off camera, as clean as possible, because when I'm in a stamping marathon, I don't want to get up. Anybody else with me? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that off to the side, give us a little bit more room here. So we've got this piece. Now, this piece is going to get attached to the front of my card base, and you will have seen me bring this in just a few minutes ago. This is the silicone craft sheet. I cannot live without this here in the studio because adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it which means I'm gonna avoid sticky spots on my work surface all night long. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back side. Now, for those of you just joining us here for the live stream, I hope you've got a beverage and a comfy spot. We got three demonstrations tonight to celebrate that brand new mini catalog. 
Here's that acetate card base, and I'm centering this in the center. Now, this is going to have a very important positioning in just a moment, but let's push that off to the side and let's do a little bit of stamping. Here comes the fun part, right? So I've got some scrap cardstock here and I'm going to be using the Memento Black Ink Pad and I could not resist this stamp set. It is a free selection from Celebration. Remember I mentioned to you that for every $50 increment you spend, you're going to be able to choose something for free. And these adorable otters are one of the free $50 level selections. And I love them because their faces and expressions are just so cute. So I went ahead and I mounted one of those images here. And I'm going to give that a little tap here on my ink pad. And we are going to stamp him here. All right. I'm going to take that off camera and just clean that really quickly. There's also a little party hat in there. Now this is a spot where you may want to use your stamp positioning tool. I'm gonna just go for it tonight, okay? So there we go. And I'm just gonna clean that stamp. Never put your stamps away dirty because if you're like me and you never know what color you used last, you would never wanna transfer that old ink to a new ink pad. Now I obviously colored this and I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I do wanna walk you through a little bit about using alcohol-based stamp and blends markers. And wait till you see what I did with this. It's so cute. And I don't know about you, it doesn't matter how old you are. I think this is gonna be appropriate for the young or young at heart. This is the crumb cake. And I'm gonna do a little bit of the otter. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I wanna show you how these work if you're not familiar with alcohol-based markers. And I love the stamp and blends. They come in a combination, $9 US, and you get the light and the dark shade. And you can use them independently, just like you would markers, or you can layer them, which is what I'm going to do. They are dual ended, so you can choose the tip that best works for your project. I kind of favor the brush tip. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna color in some of my otter. Let's just do half of them, okay? Because I've got one already finished for you. There's my little otter. And I'm gonna leave him colored in. Now it's very, very important that you give this a few seconds for that alcohol base to evaporate in order for you to lay down the next shade. If you work too quickly, what's going to happen is those two shades can blend and bleed just a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here to the darker shade, and I'm gonna come in a little bit around the edge, and I'm gonna add a little bit of darker shading here and across here. It doesn't matter which one you use first, it's just a matter of preference. I love to use the light because I tend to be heavy handed with the dark. Again, you're gonna to need to let that base alcohol evaporate a little bit because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend them together so that we have more of a shaded look. So I'm gonna come back in here with the light shade and I'm gonna pull the dark into the light. Now while it's processing, it never looks like a whole lot. I'm gonna be honest with you. But if you give it a couple seconds, it comes out fantastic. And let me show you what I did. Now before you join me, I took the liberty of coloring him in and I've got him here. And I also did a greeting from that stamp set that I have here. Let's go ahead and let's work on the front. And I wanna give you some tips about the rest of the card to make this look seamless. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use a combination of dimensionals here. So I've got some bigger full size dimensionals here cause they fit really, really well. And I'm a big fan of making sure that they are well balanced on my card because I know that my cards are gonna go through the mail meter at the post office, and that mail meter has rollers in it. And if you don't balance these really well, I have been told that they come out a little kitty wonkish, you know, a little lopsided. So I'm generous with them. I'm gonna put him right here, and then we're gonna take this greeting, and we're gonna be really careful about where we put these. So I'm gonna anchor these towards the bottom. I wanna make sure I did that right now that I'm talking. Yep, I did. And I'm gonna put another one here. And again, I'm careful to balance these because we're gonna do a little overlapping here. And then I'll use that take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment to remove those little small backings. Also great for my arthritic fingers. And this now is gonna go here across the bottom. Now, a couple little things to kind of spruce this card up. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and do something on the inside. And I wanna show you what I did here. Same stamp set. But do you see these little splash marks? Okay, let me show you something. These are the silver and clear epoxy essentials. And I honestly do not think that these get enough airtime. So you get a package of silver and you get a package of clear. 
Did you know that you can take your Stampin' Blends markers and you can custom color these any shade that you want? I prefer to use the darkest shade and I'm gonna give you an important tip about this. You're gonna to wanna to use the chiseled side because you don't want to fray the brush tip. That's important as you move forward with your coloring. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take one of these and I'm just going to color it. I actually find that if I do a couple shades after it dries, I'm happier with it. But the great thing about this is it's buildable. So if you give that alcohol base to a little bit of time to evaporate, you can come back and make them darker, which is what I did here. Once those dry, I simply pick them up. There are glue dots on the back and I stuck them right here on top of that cardstock. Easy peasy. All right, but let's go ahead and let's do some alignment to the inside of this card. I've got my Stampin' Seal Plus here. Let's go ahead and add a little adhesive here to the back. And then we are gonna open this up. It is very important for this to really be a window card that these two are lined up identically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this card. Do you see what I'm doing? And I'm gonna open it upside down. So now it's face down. I'm taking this in the right direction and I'm laying it right on top of this one. So they're mirrored right now. And then I'm simply going to close it. That's going to ensure that however I laid this one is going to be laid for here. But if you're like me and you flip this over and you're not too keen how the back looks, or perhaps you like to put your little hand stamped insignia, go ahead and grab yourself another piece of coordinating colored cardstock. And we're going to put that on the back because I like to go ahead and put that on all my cards. And again, we are going to mirror this. And this is easier because we can see through it. So we're just going to adhere that here and look at Super duper simple with a little pizzazz here in the center. Now this is a very, very simple card, but let's go ahead and let's move on to the second window card, which is gonna step things up just a little bit more. All right, let me move that toe out of the way and let's bring in the next set of products. This one is using a very unusual size card base. This is measuring five and a half by six and a quarter, and then I scored it at two inches. Okay, so we've got a breakaway on the front here. I'm a big fan of that bone folder for those nice creases. Those are gonna be really important when you have a fun fold type card, which is what this is. But because there's a breakaway here, there's an area here at the bottom that's gonna to have to be piecemeal together to finish the front of this card. And this is where the acetate comes into play. So I've cut myself a piece of acetate here, and these are going to get bridged together. Now. I decided not to go all the way up to here with the acetate because quite frankly, it was a waste, but you certainly can do that. So there's no right or wrong way if it's yours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet once again, and I am gonna run adhesive right across this outside edge. And I'm working as close as I can. Again, I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera view, which means I got a little zealous on the outside edge, but my stamp and seal plus comes out in tabs. And I love that because if I get real excited, like I did, I can kind of curl it back on top of itself. Now that I have that there, I am gonna take this piece of acetate and I'm gonna mirror it here to the bottom of this card. So I'm looking at the left and the right and the sides and I'm simply going to close it. The measurements in your project sheet are going to fit perfectly for this. So if you decide you want it to go all the way up to here, you obviously are going to compensate for that. Now let's talk about how we're gonna finish this to kind of spruce this up. This is really, really fun. And I'm also gonna teach you a technique in the stamps I'm going to use. Now I did this ahead of time just to speed things up. I've got some designer series paper here that I layered on some white cardstock. Lots of fun, new designer series papers. Can't help myself. I love the accessories. I think it does an awful lot to bring your cards together. So this has a very narrow border and you're gonna find these cutting dimensions as well in your project sheet. This one is going to go down here. And then we're gonna talk about the inside because that's gonna be really important, isn't it? Oh, my Stampin' Seal Plus, super, super strong and I push too hard. One thing I've come to learn about this adhesive, you gotta be a little ginger with it. If, you're, if you've had a bad day, you can get really carried away. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cover up this side just a little bit so it sticks. Curl my little tabs at the back because, you know, I got aggressive there, right? It's been a Monday, right? And then I'm going to open this up to make this easier for my hand, especially on a white card base here or scratch paper. It's difficult to see. This is going to go across here on the bottom. I'm looking to align it the very best that I can. We have a window now. 
Now I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to stamp that because obviously that's going to be very important because you're going to be able to see it from the front. But before we do that, let's work on the fun part on the stamping. All right, so I've got a strip here of white cardstock. And the best part about this is that we are going to use a bundle of brand new products called Cactus Cuties. And I love it because it's whimsical and it can make any type of card. Great for masculine as well as feminine and for different occasions. And I said bundle because you can buy it with the coordinating punch. Now remember when you buy in bundles, you're gonna be able to save 10%, which is you're not gonna want one without the other, quite honestly. Now I did and didn't use this on this specific card, but I wanna talk you through how to use it. Because it's a builder punch, it means it has more than one image on one specific punch, which is fantastic because look, it's four punches in one, which saves you a bundle of money. But you're gonna find the best way to actually stamp it is on a strip of cardstock because that's gonna allow you to punch it out a lot easier. Now, let me go ahead and show you what I did that I find is super, super important. When you get your stamp set, I want you to take a scrap piece of cardstock and I want you to create a template. So I just cut a scrap here and I went inside and I just punched it. And then I noted what was going to be the top of the punch when I inserted it. So that this gives me an indication of how I need to stamp the images so they will fit very easily inside the punch. All right, let's get started. I've got my little cardstock strip here and I'm gonna go ahead and use that little cactus image. So I've got my cactus here. And of course we can just stamp it in green, but that would be boring and I can't teach you a technique. So let's go ahead and let's up this just a little bit. I've got my pear pizzazz ink here and I have my old olive ink here. I am going to bring in a sponge dauber and I love these because your finger goes up inside, which means it's super duper easy to use. I'm gonna ink it up in the old olive. I'm gonna turn it face up. I'm sorry, that's the pear pizzazz. I'm taking the old olive and I'm adding some dark color around the outside one edge. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to stamp this. Now you can see I'm gonna stamp it here in the same direction as that punch. Lots of firm, even pressure. And we've got a little bit two-tone graduated color there, don't we? Isn't that fun? It's a great way to up those solid stamps to get a little extra texture, a little extra fun out of them. Now these can be washed out with just dish soap and water and you can let them air dry. Make sure they're good and clean and then you can use them in other colors. I just happen to have one for each of them. It just makes my life easier just only because I've been stamping for such a long time. But now look what's going to happen. Because we have that template, we're then able to come into our punch. We're gonna turn that sideways to make it super easy for your hand and then you're gonna squeeze and then out comes your little cactus pieces. Now, these little extra pieces here on the end, you can obviously save if you wanna use them for confetti or other things. But I love the fact that now I have a perfectly stamped image all created from the template to help line up things. All right, so that's how that works. Now I'm gonna set that off to the side for just a moment. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the other pieces I did ahead of time. So there's a cactus image here that I cut by hand. No big deal, but do you see how I did the exact same thing? Do you see some different variations of color? All right, and then I went ahead and I did another one here. I already connected that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here's a little pot and I got fussy and I put some linen thread about it. And I have two flowers. Let me just dump those out here that I did. Now keep in mind that punch includes those flowers. I don't know if you noticed that or not. That's gonna make creating this super duper easy. All right, let me set that off to the side and let's talk about assembly. I like to put my little pots and things together first. I find that works so much easier than trying to assemble it on your card, at least for me. So I've got a little bit of scotch tape there. I don't know if you can see that or not because linen thread has a tendency to wanna to slip. And since I know I'm not gonna put this in a photo album, which of course you would not wanna do because that's not archival quality, it's perfect for your cards. So I'm gonna add a little adhesive here across the top. Let's see if that's gonna stick. Okay, so you know what? We can kill two birds with one stone and let's put it this way. Didn't wanna stick over my scotch tape. So we'll put it on this side. And then we are going to pot our plant. Now that these are potted, I'm gonna save these until I'm done. Let's come back over to here. Now there's a couple things I wanna to talk to you about. You can add adhesive here. 
I do not recommend liquid glue. I tried it and it spreads and it looks really awful on the inside. So you can use regular adhesive or you can use dimensionals. I love dimensionals because they give you that little extra pop on your card. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a couple of those here. I'm going to add, well, let's just do one here and let's do two here. And I'm going to strategically place these to help anchor this down. I am also going to add one here in the center and one here in the center. I am not doing the top. Now on this one, we are going to end up overlapping. So we're going to use a couple extra dimensionals for this one, but I'm going to, I'm actually going to lay this one down first because I want to show you something. Let's take off the backings to this. This is the take your pick tool. I saw someone ask what this is called. The best $10 investment you will ever make because I love that putty tip as well. That's going to help you pick things up. I am going to gravitate this over to the far right side. And do you see why I didn't do dimensionals? Because I was concerned that maybe this would fall on a different level. I'm good now. Now that I have this piece, I can then judge where my dimensionals need to go. Because if I got too zealous, this area would be higher than this area. So it's important for elevation. So I'm going to gravitate here on this side. So let's go ahead and put one there. That'll anchor that together. Let's put these other two down here. And then here, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of adhesive because I want to make sure that I don't have an elevation difference over this pot. Then wait till I show you what we're going to do for the inside. And we're going to take off that backing. And this card was important for me to teach you first because wait until you see this last one. And then this one, I'm just going to change the elevation a little bit. I'm going to bring my pot up a little higher and we're going to tack that in place. Now let's talk about our flowers and wait until you see what we're going to do to kind of up this up. I wanted to attach those to my cactus. So for me, the easiest way was either to use dimensionals or to use glue dots. And in my case, I decided to use glue dots today. So I'm gonna peel back one of the glue dots here. I find these really difficult to use with my arthritic fingers. So I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. I'm gonna to place it right on top and I'm going to press. And I'm gonna roll one more back and I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. This side of your take your pick tool is kind of like your best friend. And then I'm going to anchor this right on top of this cactus tip here. And then this one, I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one down here. So we've got a little bit of color continuity. Okay, let's talk about the inside and wait until you see the accessory that I use for this. So I've cut my card base for the inside that's going to fit here. Obviously, we're going to need to be very strategic about where we're going to stamp our greeting, aren't we? So let me give you a couple tips. I like to hold it virtually where it's going to be eventually adhered. Now, if you don't trust yourself, grab my favorite art pencil. You'll find this in my craft room favorites over at lisastampstudio.com. Click on shop, and I think it's like the fifth tab down, craft room favorites. I absolutely love certain products that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell, and they're not competing products. This is the best soft lead pencil and eraser you'll ever use in your craft room. You'll love it. So what I do is I kind of come in here and I'm like, okay, so I know it's going to fall somewhere right around here. So I'm going to make myself a little tiny line just to give me an idea. I'm going to come back over here to my grid paper. I'm going to pick up my Calypso Coral ink pad and I'm going to go over to the greeting that is in that stamp set. This is just one of them. It says just a note. Now I know I need to be somewhere right around there and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that right about here. So we've got our greeting. And then I'm going to close this up because an open ink pad around here, recipe for disaster. All right, let's go ahead and add our adhesive to the back side. We're going to do a little bit in the four corners. This is a very, very strong adhesive, so I try not to get too zealous with it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to put this where we intend it. Before you go too crazy, sticking it down, give yourself a double check. It's going to fit. And then I'm going to use that handy dandy eraser I told you about. And we're going to erase that little pencil mark. I'm telling you what, I was kind of glad that I did it because look at, I don't see too many pencils that literally erase everything without leaving you a mark. That thing is fantastic. All right, but I found an incredible use for these. These are the faux sea glass shapes. Now, while they may be intended for, you might think, beachy or natural scenes, they make the perfect thorns for your cactus. Are you ready? So I went ahead and I just pulled off a shape here that I thought that would work. They've got glue dots already on them. 
and I put one here. Let's take another one and we'll put another one. Oh, let's go put this one on this side. And then I grabbed a couple others for my other cactus down here, just to kind of build in a little bit of character. And you'll be able to see how this actually looks really good in the photograph in your project sheet. Don't just think that certain types of embellishments are only types for certain types of cards. Mix and match. All right, this last card is the one that I've been waiting for and it's the one I've practiced so I could teach it to you really easily. Let me set off these embellishments to the side and let's move over to our last and final window card. All right, for this one, we also have a very unusual base for it. This is four and a quarter by eight, and this time I scored it at five and a half inches. And we're going to go over this with the bone folder. I do want to give a huge shout out to Natasha Foote. I saw her make this card, and I just tweaked how I'm going to assemble it. It's the same exact result, but I'm really excited to share this with you. The very first thing that I did was I took a piece of designer series paper to cover up the top flap, and obviously that's optional. You can emboss that, you can stamp it, you can do whatever you want. This comes from Pattern Party Designer Series Paper Stack, and it's been around for a little bit, and it's a host exclusive item. And I'm pointing that out to you because, and look, double sided, because with tomorrow's brand new mini catalog coming out, I got a really funny feeling that some of you may have a large wish list order. And if your order is $150 or more in product before shipping and tax, you can choose any of the exclusive host code products absolutely free. So there's host code stamp sets in there that you might want to scoop up. Now I am trying not to go all the way up to the crease line. I learned that the hard way when I was practicing this one yesterday. So I'm trying to leave a little bit of room there so this will continue to bend. Now if you're like me, we never measure perfectly, do we? Okay, so I'm grabbing my scissors. And you know what? I have a feeling that there's going to be adhesive on here, which I think there is. So... I am going to grab these. I keep these in the studio. They've got ribbon on them because that means you can use them on the sticky stuff. I am going to use that white card base as a guide to cut away the excess that's going to show. I do my best to try to make my cards look like they're well finished, but you know what? None of us measures perfectly. It's all part of paper crafting, right? This is an art. It's not a science. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut that part away. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to need to make a frame. And I know you're probably thinking a frame for a window card. Yep. So I've got a piece of black cardstock here and I've brought in two of my rectangle stitched dies and I absolutely love these. Look at the graduated sizes. For those of you wanting to repeat this project, it is the fifth from the center and the seventh from the center. Okay. Those are the two sizes. You want to make sure that when you nestle these together, you're going to have a frame type look. Now, let me teach you the easiest way to create this because I know I have had some frustration of my own in the past. I recommend this. This is the post-it note labeling and cover-up tape. You're going to be able to find this in my craft room favorites as well. You will thank me. This is incredible. So what you're going to do is it tends to be a little bit wider than what you need is you're going to anchor it on your scrap paper here and then here, two opposite directions, all right? You're going to take the smaller frame and you are going to visually look to see where that needs to go. So I'm going to pull myself off another piece. I don't measure. If you're one of those that measure, God bless you. I, I can't be bothered. So I just go visual. I'm like, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to tape this one in the opposite two directions. Guess what happens now when I put this through my stamp and cut and emboss machine? Perfect. This tape is a game changer. And here's the best part. Even though you have run it through your machine, you are able to save these pieces. So they may be a little bit worn, but that post-it tape is very, very strong. And I actually just leave it here or right on top of my machine when I dismantle it. Now I did do that ahead of time, just to save a little bit of space here on the stamp table, which has given us this. This frame is going to go here and wait until you see the coolest window that we make, all right? Now we are gonna to need to add adhesive. So I'm gonna flip this over. Now there's a couple things that you can do. The very first thing you can do is you can use tear and tape. This is a nice wide, or I'm sorry, a narrower tape and you can add it here. I'm kind of feeling gutsy tonight. Let's just hope for the best. And I'm gonna use my um, stamp and seal plus and I'm gonna run this right down inside my frame. I'm going slow because I wanna to try to stay within the perimeter of this. 
This tape is very strong. It's very, very sticky. So I'm not worried that it won't hold because I know that it will. And again, if you get a little zealous, you can always curl that back on top of itself, which is one feature about this tape that I absolutely love. It comes out little tiny tabs that are like connected. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. And again, I'm taking my time. I find sometimes if I go too long of a thread, I get kind of excited and then I can't stop it really good. So I'm going to turn this and we're going to go over here. Now the assembly of this is not difficult. And if you are going to remake this after you're watching the video, you're going to stop and start and work right alongside with me. It is not hard, I promise. All right, there we go. Now what we're going to do is I am just going to hold this over this. I'm not sticking it down because I want to get an idea of where this is going to go. And obviously I want to try to center it. So I can see that I need to come down just a little bit under that row of checks. And I am going to move my, there, my silicone craft sheet down so it doesn't stick to my paper. This is why the silicone craft sheet is a wonderful little thing. And I'm gonna do my best and we're gonna center that here, okay? Now, here is where the bottom piece has to come in. Remember the last card I just taught you? We did something similar, okay? So I've got another piece of cardstock here. And again, all the measurements are inside that project sheet for you. This is gonna go here at the bottom. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this piece up here to the bottom, to the left and to the right, the very best that I can. And listen, there's adhesive behind here. So we're not gonna to go too, too crazy. We're just gonna tack it down until we are sure that it's got a little contact with that paper because we don't want it to stick to the inside of the card. And let's hope tonight, because you're all watching me, that it's not gonna do that. All right, we're good. It's made contact. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and just make sure that it sticks really good. Here's where the acetate comes into play. We have one piece here. Again, measurements are in your project sheet. This is going to go here. You are going to add adhesive here and here to attach this, all right? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna use this and you can use your tear and tape if you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my Stampin' and Seal Plus and I'm working near the edge. Do not worry if you get a little bit too low, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing here and we're gonna stop. All right, here comes now that window sheet. I wanna make sure I didn't get too excited there. And then we are going to attach this. I am so excited about this card. I love, love, love how these cards turned out. And I'm looking to align the edges the very best that I can. And we're gonna tack those down. All right, remember it's still sticky here. So do you see what we've got so far? Very similar to the first card, but here comes the twist. We are gonna take another piece of acetate. It is the exact same size as this one. I'm gonna lay this one up off of here to the side for just a moment. This is where you're gonna to wanna to use tear and tape along one side. I'm gonna use it on this side. It doesn't matter which side, but one side. So I've got my tear and tape here, and I'm gonna lay this right across here on the edge of the window sheet. And I'm coming across, and this is why they call it tear and tape. So I'm gonna have my nail there, and I'm just gonna pull. And that's gonna rip the tape. One thing about this tape is you need to press it down inside your cardstock because it is double-sided, so that when you pull off the paper backing, you're not gonna have a whole hot mess. Now I'm not gonna pull off the whole thing yet because this is gonna be really important. So I'm creating myself a little tab right there so that I can pull it off when I'm finished. We are going to add adhesive here. I'm gonna turn it to try to keep my head out of your camera view. And I'm gonna go right over that edge, okay? Nice little strip. We are also going to need adhesive here and here because if we don't, this is gonna be flying all over the place and that'll make sense in just a moment, okay? So we're gonna come right down here and I've got glare off of that. You know, when you're not here with me, my head is literally right over my paper. Anybody else at my age? All right, here comes this little piece of window sheet. We are looking to line up the bottom edge and the outside edge and I'm looking to try to make my ends even. We're pressing here and we're pressing here. This now has become a pocket. Do you see it? Okay. This is not a shaker, but it's going to be the coolest window you have ever seen. Okay, so let's push this off to the side and let me show you these. These are called the sequence for everything. 
They are available in my online store. Wait until you see the other cards I made using these sequins, okay? Same format, but a little bit fun. I'm gonna carefully take off the lid. I love this kind of bubble package that keeps everything nice and safe. I found using my fingers was a hot mess because of the static. So I have one of these little tiny, little tiny espresso coffee spoons. I don't even know what this is called. I found it in my stash of serving utensils. And I'm gonna pick up some of these red ones, okay? I have found that it's best to scatter them. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure, and I know my hand is kind of in the way, so bear with me here. You're gonna to wanna to kind of move them a little bit left and a little bit right. And this is where I found the edge of my spoon to kind of be really, really helpful. And you probably have like a little scoop of some sort at home that you can use. And don't worry about it just being just perfect, okay? I'm gonna move those off to the side. Let me recap those so those don't spill. And then what we're gonna do now, remember that little strip right here? Well, now we're gonna seal up that pocket. So I'm gonna pull this and I'm gonna press. And then I'm gonna come right over that and I'm gonna burnish that pocket closed. Now, this obviously is not very pretty from the inside, is it? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna cover that. So I cut a piece of cardstock for this and for this. So let's go ahead and let's take this. And I am actually gonna add the adhesive to here and not to the extra piece of cardstock. That's just so I can stay within the perimeters. One of the other things that I learned was not to work too, too close to the edge. You wanna make sure your paper is not gonna come up to the score line, otherwise you're gonna have difficulty folding the card. All right, so I'm looking to kind of go here and try to not to come too, too close to the top and then we're just gonna seal it. And then I'm looking for my other little piece of paper and doesn't it figure? I didn't cut it. So we're gonna use one I have a piece of a little greeting on. Oh well, we're gonna do that on the outside. And then we're gonna put a piece here. I had lots of pieces tonight, so we'll apologize for that. And then we're gonna put another piece here and a little dab here and a little dab here. Okay, and then we're gonna add this piece here. And we're just gonna put that face down. We're gonna pretend that it didn't have anything on it. All right, and then I'm just lining up my edges the best that I can. So now the inside of the card is nice and clean. All right, but you guys, oh my gosh, it's so fun. It's not intended to shake. It's intended to be a window. Now this might not like look like a lot, but hang tight because here comes the best part. We've got scrap white cardstock and we are going to decorate this and it's gonna play the whole thing up. I have a brand new stamp set that's coming out tomorrow. It's called Hello Ladybug and it's offered also as a bundle with this, the Ladybug Builder Punch. Now, do you recall me telling you how I made a template with the other one? Well, I did the exact same thing with this one. This is gonna make your life so much easier when it's time to use the punch. So let's go ahead and let's do our ladybug and let me show you how cool this is to work. So there is one image of a ladybug in here that's solid. There are numerous in the stamp set. Give your image a little twist on your memento black ink pad and that's gonna help give you better coverage. Oftentimes, solid photopolymer stamp sets, I get emails from people saying it's not coming out clear. All right, so what you're gonna do is this. Bring in your pierce mat. If you don't have a pierce mat, you can pick one up in my online store. It's a one-time buy, you're gonna love it. It's nice and dense. If you're in a pinch, a mouse pad may work. What I'm gonna do now is I am looking at my template. Do you see how she's going down here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp her in the exact same way so that she's gonna fit in my punch. And then we are going to lift. And we got nice clear coverage there, okay? I'm gonna punch this part out first. So let's go ahead and let's manipulate her. Now I'm gonna tell you, I looked at the bottom half of her body here first, and then I kind of centered her little antennas. And then when I was happy, I punched. So now we've got the top. But let's now work on the bottom. I found for the wings that I wanted to do the dots first. This worked really well for me. Now you're gonna see that the wings here are going sideways, right? So we wanna make sure our dots are gonna go sideways. Do the dots first. And I'll tell you why that worked really well for me. Because I found by doing the dots first, let's move this over, I could actually see through this when I did the next layer. So let's close this up. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this off because we don't want that to get caught in our punch. And then I'm gonna come in with the real red ink pad for her ladybug wings. And we are gonna ink this up. I know I'm just a little off camera because you're pure smat, sorry. 
and then we're gonna bring this over to here. And I'm gonna turn this to make it easy for my hand. Do you see with photopolymer? You can see exactly where you're going. So your alignment is gonna be perfect every single time. If you do the wings first and you use your stamp, Stamparatus Stamp Positioning Tool, you'll have no trouble. But I like to do it this way. All right, here comes our punch. And now wait till you see this comes together and wait till you see the other samples. So again, this punch leaves the most perfect border all the way around. Once you get it aligned the way you want it, give it a little squeeze and you're gonna punch out your image. All right, don't throw away your templates. You're gonna wanna keep those in your stamp set. That's really important. Let's go ahead and let's work on this and wait until you see my other cards. So we're going to build this ladybug. So I'm going to take two dimensionals right now and we are going to flip these wings over and we're going to place them near the top. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to remove those backings and then we are going to put her wings on. So cute, but I decided to elevate it just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and let's put a couple here and a couple here and then one near her head because I want her stabilized because I'm going to mail this card. And then we're going to take off those backings once again. Now, if you think those red sequins are cute, wait till you see the other cards I made using this exact same stamp set. Use this window to your advantage on the placement. Can you see how I have a little bit of a naked area here on this one side? So I'm going to place her here but also make sure she stays within the perimeter of your card. And then last but not least, because it's photopolymer, I'm gonna go ahead and take those words. Remember the ones I put in on the inside upside down? And we are gonna put those, let's see, right down here. You can bug me anytime. Look how adorable this is. Does it have to be a rectangle? No, you can work with other shapes. But let me show you the other cards I created all using that Hello Ladybug bundle. So here's the one with the green sequence. Yep, that leaf is part of that stamp set. Look at that. Isn't this adorable? And it plays up those green sequins. Again, not intended to be a shaker. It's supposed to be a window. And then the last one I have for you is this. And I used the yellow sequence. And I played up with the flower that's in the stamp set. This does not fit the punch. So I fussy cut it, which was not difficult. And obviously a good portion of it is hidden behind your ladybug but look at this, aren't they fun? Okay, so this is fantastic. The great thing about these sequins, you know you can use those white and gold all year round, you cannot go wrong. And just to recap, we of course made that fantastic window pane sequin card and then our first two cards here. I would absolutely love to know your favorite. Go ahead and leave me a comment now, I would love to read those. Couple things I wanna make sure that you are aware of and I'm gonna switch screens really quick. This is the last day for the current mini catalog, and some of those products are marked down up to 50%. Head over to lisastampstudio.com and make sure you're not missing on something that you really can use for next year. Be sure to use my monthly host code, which you'll find at the very top of my website because I offer exclusive and generous ordering rewards. Make sure you scoop up that project sheet when this live stream is over so you can get all the cutting dimensions and the pictures. When you get over to lisastampstudio.com and you're new there, you can subscribe to my free weekly e-newsletter and you're going to want to do that because I provide a PDF tutorial there not shared on any of my other platforms and I would love to include you. It's a no frills kind of thing. If you've already subscribed and you're quite not sure if you're getting it or not, shoot me off an email. You can contact me right through my website. I also have a very extensive PDF tutorial library check it out. Lots of there for you to inspire you through this new year. Grabbing these last publications one more time. You're going to want to check these out online tomorrow. I have full color PDF tutorial copies for you over on my website starting at midnight mountain time on January 4th, 2022. Mark your calendar and subscribe. Click the bell and the word all so that you'll get notifications when I come back with you live next week. Now, like next week, it's going to be Wednesday, which is January 12th already. Can you believe it? And I have a fantastic card to share with you and a ton more samples. I hope that you will join me. Gina, thanks for all your hard work and moderating tonight. And thank you for sticking with me so long today. I had lots to share. I look forward to seeing you next week, everyone. Bye-bye.